Welcome back to TTC. A viewer informed us that there are now flashlights you can buy that are powerful enough or designed to start fires, like on purpose, for as little as about 40 bucks with even what appears to be name brands entering this space. So yeah, we bought some along with, at similar or less price points, regular flashlights to see what you could buy instead if you forego the campfire starting bragging rights and went full on communicate with international space station levels of lumens. According to these Amazon brands and sellers, as unbelievable as ever and breaking channel records with 1 million, 1.2 million lumens and even 2.5 million lumens. As well as an affordable name brand, we expect to be a bit more down to earth to see how they all do, measure their actual lumen output, candela for how far that would reach in distance, runtime and battery size versus claimed, our ever popular drop test to see how they hold up, and well, yeah, fire starting tests. That's a new one for me. Let's dive in. This is the Skyfire 1097 we bought for about 40 bucks. In case you're new here, we buy every product we've ever tested on the channel and Welcome. Unlike most flashlight brands that curiously have fire in their name, which we think is normally a bad thing for something rechargeable, this one has a purpose, and that purpose, according to them, is to light things ablaze with its 10,000 lumens output, which is minuscule compared to the models coming up next. It does that using a 5,000 milliamp hour 26800, which is not a battery size I've seen in a light before, and most importantly, the key to this whole thing, as it turns out, an included focusing lens that threads onto the light. Once you twist this thing on, it doesn't do a whole lot. I found not even that warm to the touch, but this pattern does look pretty wide here still. The trick is to first figure out that the light has a beam pattern focusing option that many lights do, and then you give that a try and yeah. Ow. That'll let you know it's working pretty quick. It's hard to see here because it blows out the camera's light level so much, but by moving this thing closer or further away, you can find a cross section point where the light becomes a pinhole size, and that will make pinholes in flammable stuff in quick order, or at least this box so far on standard paper, maybe something similar to what you might have lying around. No dice though. White, like when having fun with a laser pointer is often going to scatter too much light and not absorb enough of it to get that hot. So here's some blue construction paper. You can now see what that focus point looks like. It's pretty cool, it burns right through. And black paper, of course, like the black box is going to heat up the quickest. And you do see some small glowing embers in this process with that smoke and burn through. We'll see how useful that is coming up with name brand versions of this same sort of deal. But for now, Let's measure those lumens. This says 10,000 lumens and illuminating things from 5,000 feet away. Let's see. Yeah, not so much. After the ANSI F01 requirement of 30 seconds, this is seeing about 1,150 lumens, 1,150, not 10,000. We find that's sort of how these things go oftentimes. We do get, thanks to how it focuses that beam so tight, making it laser thin, a massive 145,000 candela. That is a lot good for as calculated and shown here, 755 meters, three quarters of a kilometer is some distance, not the twice as high advertised one and a half kilometers or 5,000 feet though. We're not quite there, but if 10,000 wasn't doing it for you, try moving the decimal a few places with 1 million lumens. And up first in order of price is the ES Green Heavy Duty Strong Flashlight. Now some put numbers like 1 million in their title, but each model we have for you today says, for example, 1 million lumens in the features and in the specifications here. This also focuses down pretty tight into a circle shape too, which is preferred over the square you would sometimes get with other models and has a 26650 battery with a stated capacity of 6,000 milliamp hours. This only charges that we found one amp max, though the last Skyfire was around one and a half amps. So not all that fast, all said, but I'm happy to report every light today charges with a USB-C connector. So that is progress, so we are seeing it. It has a digital charge display, some funky rainbow colors at the top, and it doesn't have a flashing strobe mode you have to cycle through, and shuts direct to off with a button press after using it for a few seconds. These are what we consider high ranking features in this type of crowd these days, so you'll love to see it. What you won't be seeing and you can thank your eyeballs for that, most likely is 1 million lumens. You probably already figured it out for yourself, but not sure you would have called it only making 890 lumens. That becomes an actual rating of 840 lumens. Yeah, not a whole lot for a 26650 cell size flashlight, but thanks to some decent focus, it does muster 94,000 candela, 620 meters, 
That's not shabby, though also not a thousand meters or 3280 feet that they claimed. And yeah, as it stands, the last one made 11.5% of its lumen claims, and this one, 0.08%. We'll see if by the end this is able to meet even one thing it advertises. I think that would be a cool goal. Up next, at $27, we have the P-Scat. P-Scat. With a double home run name like that, it's hard to scroll by and not click on it, and I found myself doing just that. So here it is must work or at least works on a YouTuber, so that's not saying much. This is cool in that it has a side cob light you can use as an area light and not a harsh color temp either, so it's nice to work around. It charges faster, 1.8 amps, which is decent. And then out the top, they say, well, yeah, 1.2 million lumens powered by a 5,000 milliamp hour, again, 26,650. And even a magnet on the bottom, feature-wise, it's something I'd take for camping for sure. It's pretty neat. Let's see how it does. And you add 930 lumens, which drops even faster than the last one by 30 seconds at 835, around the same as the ES Green. The area light gets about 170, 180 lumens, which goes down if you run both lights as they can both work at the same time. And it's also getting 71,000, 72,000 candela for 535 meters of illumination distance, which is impressive for how low the lumens were. We're talking zero. 0.07%, a new channel record, in fact, PSCAT going on the TTC leaderboard for furthest distance between advertised lumens and reality as a percentage. I'm glad we bought it. Okay, next up we have for you a name brand, or at least a brand we've heard of and has like a website and warranty policy. Wubin, this is the L50 that we bought because it was $34, which puts it under the price of the Skyfire, though similar in price, just no fire starting part, or at least we're hoping. On its face, it's a bit less of everything, smaller than all of those, which isn't a downside most of the time. But yeah, an 18650 cell battery, so just 2600 milliamp hours is advertised, so it's smaller there as well. Simple tail cap button that does one thing. It turns it on and it turns it off. You can quick click to high from there, and then it's just on high and then turns off. There's some beauty and simplicity there, and it's just 1200 lumens. In this crowd, that's like showing up to a gunfight at high noon with a strongly worded letter. And currently, that letter is enough to top the gunslingers in this one horse town 1340 lumens, which doesn't drop much down to, well, we'll call this 1305. Over the 1200 they advertise, you love to see it. And this is not focused adjustable, not super hot in the center either. It's not going to be a thrower per se, but the candela measurement here is. 14,800, which is not bad for most flashlights we test. That's 243 meters and 109% of the lumen claims here. For 34 bucks, not mad at this one so far. And here we have Philips, also a brand we've heard of, and this time also coming out with a fire starting flashlight and not the old fashioned way of just not having charge protection on a product. Instead of $40 for the Skyfire, we're up to $60 now, but very similar specs like 10,000 lumens and similar methods of getting there. It also comes with a focus lens sort of packed with it, though they don't thread into each other, so they are a bit different. This even uses the same 26800 battery though that we've not seen before today and charges at the same 1.5 to 1.8 amps, so a lot of the same sort of stuff going on between these two. Like the Skyfire, it doesn't do much to light colored surfaces, or fuel in this case, but powers through darker ones like this with relative ease, so it does make for a smoke show, we'll see how well that works. And for lumens, this one gets... 1015. It does seem like a similar version of the Skyfire, 1015 lumens and 142,000 candela. In both cases, close to but below that cheaper model, we're talking 750 meters here, which is a heck of a ways out. And well, yeah, 10% of advertised in this category. All right, we're going to give this one last go. Priced above all the previous entries, but similar to that Philips, we have a bigger budget to match that Philips with this one coming in at $55. According to the specs, this is how much flashlight you can get if you're not wanting to light fires, though technically it should be lighting fires. Yes, 2.5 million lumens. That's as high as we've ever seen advertised, so we're just going to call this the 2.5 million model. It comes with the mandatory modes that you have to cycle through to turn it off, including strobe. Its focus beam narrows down to a square shape that you can see is like a negative of the chip. And that Cobb chip is a classic generic one, not a Cree, despite the model number they're advertising and use. It does charge at 1.5 to 1.8, 1.9 amps and looks bright in person, especially indoors. But 2.5 million, we're seeing like 
2250 or so. Seems like a misplaced decimal point in there. Could happen to anyone. But this settles down to 2110. About 35,000 candela as well. All jokes aside, it's not a terrible light, just one that's been around the block. You've probably seen them before and was probably at one point advertised at 5,000 lumens and then over the years updated to these days 2.5 million in order to compete, which the brand is very much seemingly willing to do. It seemed to us so far, the main thing unique about fire starting lights is they come with these special lenses. So we tried to use it on a couple of these other entries, including this one, and you can make it work. Since around 1000 lumens worked on the other lights, we figured this 2000 lumen one would work and it's a bit broken up, not as focused, not as a small pinpoint but does make for some smoke and embers. And even the lower power 800 something lumen guys could make it work. It just doesn't screw into any of these, obviously. When you go to use these things, you're going to rely on their battery capacity to meet their claims. And running these lights in high looks like this when you're doing that. All lights drop over time, but all these, save for the Wubin, seem to fall on their face quite quickly. The Skyfire, actually doing so the least out of the rest of that group. The Philips dropped off within one minute, despite its size, you'd think it could handle some of those thermals. The Wubin, in fact, holds a sort of unprecedented curve. Few 1000 or 2000 lumen lights, 18650 size, just hold what they advertise. They might say 1200 turbo, but lose that after a few minutes. It dies off around the same time as the 2.5 million model, strangely at two hours, despite having two times the battery size of that Wubin. The rest hold out for much longer due to just not putting out a lot of light total. The Scat and Skyfire around four and a half hours and the ES Green and finally the Philips about an hour later. Here you can see those run times next to the charge times we've recorded, but even more interesting than that graph we're showing, I think is this total column here, lumen minutes, or basically the sum of our lumen measurements for a rough idea of the total light output across their charge, which looks like this, coming out on top is the only 18650 small battery light here, the Wubin with 6,000 lumen minutes, followed by these. What should usually explain that is battery capacities that we've measured, which are all listed here as advertised. Once measured, these claims of 5,000, this one became 5,000. Okay, so not bad, it's being honest there. This 6,000 measured at 4,400. This 5,000 from the PSCAT only charged for two hours, 45 minutes because the 2650 is a fake 5,000 amp hour, more like 2,400, ouch. This 2,600, we measured it as 2,500, so pretty accurate there. 5,000 was 5,000 again here, and this 5,000 measured 4,500 milliamp hours. So there are some losses to be seen, but still doesn't explain how batteries twice the even measured size put out, not the same, but less light. The drivers on these things must be crazy inefficient, just wasting watts on everything but making that light when you're seeing this output over time. Okay, and finally, before campfire time, we got durability. We dropped these things from increasing heights, three drops per increment until they break and compare that result. The Skyfire and the 2.5 million model performed the same for us and about what we'd expect from this size and pedigree of light, making it past four and eight foot drops, sometimes shutting off and needing to be turned back on. 10 foot ended things, earning a six out of 10 for them. That's not bad. The ES Green calls it quits two drops earlier at the eight foot mark, which it develops quite a kink to the left there. And then the next drop kills it completely. This gets a five out of 10. The Wubin has less weight to contend with, but it makes it to about the same point as the Skyfire and 2.5 million model. The 10 foot mark before dying, it gets a six out of 10 as well. The Peace Cat, and this seems like there's always one in the bunch, just does not want to die. Six, eight, 10 foot, 14, 18 foot. It's going to lose the magnet and then lose the steel magnet holder at the base in the process, but it still works. This made it to the unfortunate stage of spiking it on the ground where it took two attempts and it broke real good there. Well, in fact, it still turns on, but it's in many pieces. You're not gonna be using it as a light. 10 out of 10 makes it past this spiking stage. So this one gets a respectable nine out of 10 for breaking during the spiking stage, quite nice. Philips is a weird one, it gets to eight foot and then defaults to an area light mode that we could just not figure out how to turn on previously when we were testing the light in general. The top of the light bursting off apparently activates that mode. Then one more drop and it's only the top light mode working now and then it's a flashing party and no longer turns on every time. This one gets a four out of 10, not great. What we really wanna find out today though is 
Well, smoke and glowing paper is cool, but what about good old fashioned primitive fire? And which light's gonna get it done first? Obviously, we tried this before the drop testing because they're functioning in order. For a situation like this to work, you're going to need some dark fuel, like dark paper or very dark dried bark but also light fluffy stuff around it to catch that ignition because those ignition temps don't get spread much. It does penetrate into things, but doesn't increase the temperature of stuff around that spot focus all that much. And then the main thing you're gonna need is patience, a lot of patience, because this just did not do all that much, basically ever. Smokes at times, but not much flame happening. We eventually tried an accelerant, our favorite brake clean, and even that didn't take us anywhere quickly. It took a few more minutes, which I would swear the brake clean had evaporated already at this point. But a flame did catch from the Skyfire side. This is going to be very much your mileage may vary sort of situation. Some flint's going to be more reliable, but it's not impossible if you're stranded with a flashlight and only a flashlight. It may at least help you start your own friction-aided wood fire operation. So this is how we're looking. Just as far as buying like a flashlight, the L50 Woob in here is the obvious winner, only one to do what it claims, and in this case more so, somehow put out the most amount of light despite having the smallest size and smallest capacity battery, and as a result takes the one of the lowest amounts of time to charge. It's a simple flashlight, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna redefine what the goalpost is for a good flashlight, but you'd be amazed how hard it is these days with turbo settings and 40 page user manuals, just how hard it is to find something that clicks on, does the thing it says, stays on until it dies doing that thing it says, and that's it. It's a dying breed of flashlight, and it's a $35 one in this case, so I think it was a nice find. Then the Skyfire does everything this Philips does, just a little bit better, and not one and a half times the price. Maybe made in the same factory as even their little warning sheet here looks identical. So if you want a cool mobile smoke machine, sometimes fire starter to burn ant hills in an overcast, save some money and get this one. Sort of a cool category, not a feature I would have expected to be a real one, and it sort of is. Thanks for joining us on this one. We make episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching.